you're confused as to why Classics World suddenly started uploading videos of people checking engine oil, don't worry, we haven't started on a series of instructional videos. We're not going to be having you tune in next week to find out how to check your tyre pressures or anything. It's just that this Alpha Spider of mine hasn't been out of the garage in two or three months properly. And if I'm honest, it's done 50 miles in the last year, 100 miles maybe with a push, and that includes the MOT test. But tomorrow, owing to some fairly poor planning on my part, I must admit, I've got a 250 mile round trip to do, <laughs> and it's January. Not really the weather for the Alpha Spider. Hey, these things happen sometimes, and when it's a matter of old cars, sometimes it's an adventure, not necessarily something to be worried about. So, I've checked the basics, I know the heater works, and I know the radio works. Will it start? You never know with an Alpha, do you really? So what have we got here then? What we've got here is a Series 4 example of the Alfa Romeo Spider. The Series 4 cars were produced uh, from 90 to 93 and they're an update of essentially the same car that they were producing since the 60s without a brake. Uh, the plastic bumpers front and rear and the plastic side skirts just hide the body shell that's really essentially the same as the car you'd have bought in the 70s. Uh, it's still got the same twin cam engine same five-speed box, same live rear axle. The interior's restyled, but it's essentially the same car. I've owned this one for 23 years. And do you know, it's been the most reliable car I've ever owned, which you might scoff at. All you alpha haters at the back there, you can stop laughing because this car has let me down just once, once in 23 years. And that was down to a duff battery, which would no longer hold a charge. And you can't really lay the blame for that at Alfa Romeo. It's been more reliable than the BMWs I've owned. It's been more reliable than all the VWs I've owned. And it's quite a cheap car to own, really. You might think it would rust. I mean, it is an alpha. But no, uh, I've had a bit of work done on one side, but to be fair, that was down to some poorly repaired accident damage before I bought the car. It's been a great car to own, really, and I think it's cost me less than an MGB would have cost me. Certainly, I've had to spend less on bodywork repairs than I would have done with anything old and British. They're a surprisingly easy car to live with, these spiders. There's certainly these late model ones with the, the electric windows and a decent heater, fuel injection and things like that. They do make it an easy car to own. They ride nicely, especially if you've got standard suspension on them. There's a reasonable amount of space in them as well. They feel more spacious than an MX-5. And behind you, there's plenty of space for a reasonable sized suitcase. And certainly you can chuck your coats and things behind you, which you can't do in an early MX-5. You might have noticed the little Momo Corsa steering wheel on this car. When I first got it, it had a Nardi classic wheel, which is beautiful. Nice wood rim wheel, but I found I couldn't fit my knee between the door and the steering wheel, so I had to fit a smaller wheel. Luckily, the Series 4 cars have all got power steering, so it actually feels nicer with the smaller wheel anyway. And the Nardi wheel is currently in my office, so I'm, I'm going to put it on my E Type when I get an E Type. These Series 4 cars with the injection, they're about 125, 130 horsepower, depending on what you read. They would all have had a catalyst originally, but this one, I've taken the catalyst off it and fitted a, an exhaust from the earlier model, which involves drilling a hole and welding a boss on for the oxygen sensor, but it, it does sound much more like a traditional Alpha without the catalyst. Interestingly, these engines feature variable valve timing, which you associate with Honda, really, but Alpha were doing that long before Honda. It doesn't feel like a VTEC so much as it doesn't have the snap in the neck that you get with the Honda engines, but it does mean it's got quite a nice linear power delivery. You can get your foot down and get some progress. The Spider also has discs all around. They're nice big discs with proper twin piston calipers as well on the front, so none of your sliding caliper nonsense. And they do stop it well. It can feel a bit sort of wiggly in the corners really with that live axle, but it's a nice car to drive fast. You feel like you can have some fun in it without going mad. When it comes to twisty roads, you do know you're in an older car. You will get a sort of a slight shimmy from the back end over particularly rough roads, but it's not the sort of car to drive that hard. I think you can probably say it handles better than an MGB, but it would be left behind by an MX-5. Taking off the Catalyst has given it that typical trademark alpha rasp, 
and it does quieten down a little bit on the motorway you are leaving a lot of that noise behind so it does become a bit more restful but to be honest i think my neighbors would rather i didn't have that sports back box which is a little more than a pipe with a flange on the end what we've got here is what's known as the series 4 spider which was alpha's answer really to competition like the mx5 which was coming along hot and fast essentially what they did was take the original spider shape and they added plastic bumpers front and rear and plastic side skirts and just generally smoothed out the shape. I think they basically went back to Pininfarina and said, I'm so sorry, can you sort out the terrible mess we've made of your elegant nice sports car? And the result is nice. It's uh, an ideal combination of classic MGB style car and modern MX-5 style car. At least that's what I thought when I bought it. It's got electric windows, it's got Motronic injection, so it always starts. But if you're looking to buy one, the Series 4 update did bring its own drawbacks, really. The plastic bumpers, they're no longer available so if someone backs into you in a car park and that's easy to do because it's got a pointed prow like a little boat that's going to cost you because a second hand one is going to be expensive the plastic seal covers here they've got a habit of falling off if you've had to remove them for anything and you probably will want to remove them uh, because they hide rust underneath if, if it's going to rust that's where it will rust this car you've got a similar problem with the rear bumpers of course they're also unavailable although they are easier to get second hand bonnet is the same as an older spider the boot panel is unique to the series 4 so uh, that will cost you if you need to repair one and it is easy to dent it from the inside and i know from bitter experience because i've done it the wheels are unique to the series 4 uh, and they're 15s the earlier spiders used 14s so you will find people that retrofit the earlier style wheel but it doesn't somehow quite look right although the style is similar to other alpha models of the 80s like the 33 they're not the same wheel. The seats, uh, most of the Series 4, they have a combination of Alpha Tech, vinyl, and Alcantara. The Alcantara just doesn't last, so you can buy kits to retrim them, but you'll probably want to buy the foam as well. And in another 10 years' time, if you own the car as long as I've owned this one, you'll find they're looking shabby again. You need to redo it. I was a young man of 27 when I bought this car. 4th of December 1997. Single bloke. I had a house and a cat, no other responsibilities. <laughs> now I've got a wife and two teenage children, but somehow I've still got my Alpha Spider. If you're asking me to recommend an easy to live with, stylish, classic convertible sports car, what am I going to suggest? Yeah, an Alpha Spider.